Hello. Um, hopefully we've started this webinar, one hour webinar. Um, I'll just wait and see, uh, make sure things are loading up. And we're here. Good. Uh, I'll be looking at the chat as well. So hello to the uh, couple of people who are already logged into this. So we have Jason. Hello, Jason and Chess Improvement. Hello, Chess Improvement. And well, uh, what this one hour sort of, should I say, show is going to be about, it's going to be about two things. Now, I, I normally um, just do a lesson, have some tactics and stuff like that. But I, I thought for a change, I would actually play a bit of chess and play a bit of crazy blitz chess. That'd be later on. I've got some puzzles first to do a little lesson with you guys. So really, um, there's a couple of things I want to do uh, with this uh, one hour we've got. I mean, number one, OK, I'm here to promote my latest course, uh, which is my second master method, 15 hour course. So I'm obviously going to be uh, promoting that a bit throughout this one hour. Um, but I also want to sh share with you some beautiful ideas. And like I say, just play a bit of Blitz for fun, where you guys can watch a Grandmaster play a bit of Blitz. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully I won't get crushed horribly. And um, so, yeah, so hi to everyone who, who's uh, in here. I mean, at the moment, obviously, this is on the iChess uh, YouTube channel. And uh, iChess are running major sales over on their site. So well, well worth checking out. But my last course that I've done, and I'm just going to start by obviously mentioning it, because at the moment, if you click on the link below, so if you just click on the link in the description, you'll be able to get a massive, I think at least 50% or over 50% off this Master Method 2 course. So what is the last course I've done uh, for iChess? Well, let me just show you um, what I've got here. So, uh, I, I mean, I'll just talk a little bit about this before we move on to the chess. And I'm going to bring up the contents page. And I mentioned this before in, in my last webinar, so I won't go into too much about it. But it's a 15-hour course. You can see it here, hopefully. And um, basically these are the chapters i've got on the left i it's basically it's really to revolutionize your chess that's what it's aimed to um aim to do so if you're in a ruck if you're not improving you know if you haven't got to the next level if you want to improve this course is aimed at doing that so it's aimed at giving you some sharper openings i give you some openings i give you the ideas in the middle game and i also help you in a tactical sense. So I help you um, think about tactics. I help you improve your tactics and learn how to calculate and attack in a better way. So it's really aimed at revolutionizing your chess and helping you become a better attacking player with some sharp new openings. And of course, it's taken me a long time to prepare and I'm quite proud of the final product. Um, I mean, you know, I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist generally in, in most things I do. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I certainly, uh, you know, want to make sure everything I do is good. So hang on a minute. I'm just going to now get rid of this and hopefully uh, what's happening here. OK, are we back to me? Are we back? Um, let's have a look. Oh, we are back. Good. OK, so that's what the course is about. It has some weird screen thing going on there. I'm not so used to this software look at that i've created a mad well that was a mad pattern i created so anyway so that that's what the course is about and um let me just show you sort of the kind of thing i'm now going to move over to chess and show you the kind of thing that's in the course and um, now one of the chapters part two of the course part one's about openings and middle games part two is about improving your tactics and the next kind of position it is a typical i would say a typical position uh, kind of thing that I've got in there. And it's one thing I want you to improve on is thinking outside the box. So when you see a position um, to really, should I say, maybe think in different ways to what you normally think. So you might be used to, you know, looking at certain things, but I want you to try to, you know, see that little bit extra. So I'm trying to teach you how to see that little bit extra and then how to calculate better. 
Now, the next position I'm going to set up is taken from a real game. Um, Apologise if you've seen the position before. Um, I, I think it's quite a rare one. It's actually from one of the Doreski's chess books. I'll probably pronounce that horribly. But Doreski was one of the best Russian coaches. He was a coach to Kasparov and many of the other uh, Russian people. So I found this example. and It's a really nice one. Now, before I bring up the position, I talked about this the other day in a webinar called The Awakening. Now, in certain positions in a game, you need to spend more time thinking about your options. And, you know, when, when should you be doing that? Well, in critical positions. So when the position is really heating up, you know, it's like you're cooking a meal and, you know, you can you can maybe put your food in the oven or cook it on the frying pan uh, and you can leave it there. But at some point, you have to take it off the frying can pan because it's going to get burnt or out the oven. And that's the critical moment when it comes to cooking. Bit of a weird analogy. The same as in chess. This next position is obviously critical. I'm going to put you in the black side of this. It's a fascinating position, incredibly complex position. And the only way you're going to find the answer here, I mean, I looked at this puzzle, is pretty much through desperation and the process of what we call elimination. So it's black to move, and you've got to look at each move one by one, do a bit of calculation here, try to work out what you would play. And, you know, some moves in the position are just not going to work. So you can, I keep going about the process of elimination, very important tactical tool. If you go with your first instinct, calculate it. If it doesn't work, move on to um, your, you know, move on to another option. So let's have a look at this fascinating position. Uh, I, I am mentioning and hello to everyone else who's been joining in uh, the chat as well so hello to gamer and hello to Wu long I hope I said that right or so anyway um this position what a mad position this is <laughs> so oh so mad I actually hiccuped and we have a pawn about to queen over here on b2 wow and a pawn over here on g7 about to queen. And before we even look about what move we should play, let's just have a think about some of the important things that are going on here. Well, first of all, if it was white to move, what would white's best move be? Well, there's a bishop pointing towards f7 and a queen. And the best move here for white would in fact be, of course, queen takes f7 because that gives checkmate. Now, what else? Is a problem for us in this position well pawn takes pawn takes rook here is a problem is it not because our opponent would take a rook and he would queen with check so for example here we have to be very careful what we do if we play pawn takes rook queen ourselves so let's say we do that getting a second queen on the board well white just plays queen takes f7 checkmate it's the end of the game so this is in a critical moment without a shadow of a doubt and this is one of those positions where you have to think outside of the box and you can do this by whittling down your options so we know that pawn takes rook is going to lose um we know that let's have a look at other options well albert hello albert is looking at pawn takes bishop knight because that's a check now does that help us well, this is the second option we could be looking at. Well, I would say here white would maybe move this rook to c1. Just take that knight. And do we have any more good moves here? Well, in this position, we could go queen to d2 check. And uh, king to f1 is possible. But it's still a very difficult position here. Because what do we do now? I mean, we're still threatened with these two moves. I mean, this is not a bad option because at least we can castle queenside now. But if we keep um, analysing the position a little bit deeper, pawn takes here. And then after all the complications, this is where you need to make an assessment about the position. And I would say white is better because he's exchange up. But this is not so bad. So pawn, to, I've, I would say the idea suggested by Albert there pawn takes there thinking outside the box oh i gave the answer away there i hope no one saw that is is um an okay move but is there something better here um hello to august who said he's just brought both my master methods last night thank you for that august i i, I very kind of you at the moment 
I mean, I'm really promoting my second master method, which is like say 15 hours long, but you can on my website, gingergym.com purchase both of the master methods. That's 30 hours of me, you know, real interesting and good tuition to take you to that next level. And you can purchase it a very good price, 50% off either in the link below, go, go and check out the, the deals. There you go. And go and buy my course on the link below. Um, it's a second option. Um, buy that now and uh, you won't regret it i'm sure as a money back guarantee anyway and uh, you know it's it's going to help you get to the next chest but okay well other suggestions here well other people are suggesting queen d7 or king d7 so let's just have a look at all the possibilities and we've also have a suggestion of knight e d4 and knight e5 so we'll have a look at these one by one now if you were black in this position in a game you would have to Look at them one by one. Now, all you simply do in chess when you get to a complex position, if you want to prove your calculation, okay, you've got to whittle down the possibilities. So we already know pawn takes rook is not a good move because we analyze that and it's losing because of checkmate. So you do not look at that move again. You've got to expand your way of thinking. So what about someone suggested queen d7 to defend against the checkmate? Well, here, remember white had two threats. One was queen takes pawn, but the other one was pawn takes rook, getting a queen with check. And this position looks absolutely horrible for black. White has two queens on the board. You are in check. So this move would lose as well. So um, let's now also eliminate queen to d7 from our thoughts. What about king to d7? Well, king to d7 is interesting. Um, if I was white here i would consider probably just taking the pawn with check and then if the king moves to c8 taking there gaining a queen and well again this position um i don't know looks pretty bad i mean another move that white could just do here is maybe play bishop takes pawn all these things don't look very good do they um i also like to say hello to michael in the chat so hello michael I'm glad you can join us in the chat as well. I know you, uh, uh, you, you, you've uh, followed a lot of Ginger GM stuff and exhibit as well. So glad you can join in here. Um, Michael was suggesting pawn takes bishop getting a knight. Now, we did just have a look at that to start with, which is a good option. It's a good option. But we're just wondering if there's a better option. We're just going through them one by one. Well, another idea here. Let's have a look is knight to d4 check. I mean, okay, that brings the knight in with a check, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's have a look. So Al Pulley, well, I think black, white has to take that. And Al Pulley is suggesting uh, queen to e7 check, but now just bishop to e3. And again, you still have this problem with your rook uh, on h8, and you are a piece down here. So this position here to me looks losing um uh, at the moment i'm not sure not sure uh, what we can do here if we take the rook on a1 well white can also do the same white can take on h8 get a queen with check there as well so i don't know this 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 looks this this looks, uh, I don't know, this doesn't look good either so i would eliminate that move as well so we're eliminating most of the moves Knight to e5 is another move that someone has suggested to guard the pawn, but that does not deal with a second threat. And white can just go pawn takes rook queen. So all these suggestions are, are really not looking good for us as black. So we need to keep thinking, keep looking, guys. Think outside of the box. Now, I'm going to give you uh, uh, a clue here. The move that was played is a ridiculous a ridiculously crazy move and you know um one thing i think that i try to teach in my latest course and of course of course the course is a course a course a good course i like uh, what was i going what am i going on about and the idea of the course is to think that little bit differently so you need to try to think of moves that you would not think of normally that's what i try to teach you so here well, let's think. The move, when you see it, it might make some sense. And I see a couple of people have suggested the move, but I want to know the idea behind it. Um, and you might have seen it because I gave it away in the answers. Uh, by the way, I, I'm 
I'm glad that Ron is saying he's brought both of my master method courses and he, and he likes them both. Thank you, Ron, for buying them. Like I say, you can buy it below. It'd be crazy not to. And uh, yeah, it is. It's, you know, it, uh, basically, uh, it, I think I think they're worth the money. Well, OK, the move. Let's just see the answer, shall we? And the move is what Black came up with here. And it was a crazy move. A crazy move. And again, the process of elimination, I would say, made Black think about this. In desperate positions, you need to think outside of the box. And the reason Black played this move was that he needed to gain an important tempo. Now, this line is most similar, most similar um, to uh, this line. I think pawn takes here knight. It's most similar to this line that we looked at. Remember, we looked at that to start with, where white's actually a better move for white here, I think, is king to f1. But I was looking at rook takes knight and then queen d2 check with the idea of castling queenside. And that didn't look too bad for black because black has got the queen out of the way so black can get the king to safety. Now, I've just, I've just realized that after black does get a knight, I think white has a very strong move here. White can play king to f1 because if white plays this king to f1 move, black, we don't have any good checks here. If we check on d3, we lose our queen. If we check on d1, we lose our queen. And in actual fact, I think black is losing because white wants to play. Queen takes this pawn here, checkmate, and pawn takes rook queen. So actually, this is really, really bad. Um, well, hello, Aldo. Hello, Aldo. How are you doing, Aldo? The legendary Aldo, um, and hello to everyone else as well. Aldo's come up with the right idea, maybe. Okay, and the idea here, and like I say, I don't know if I've shown this puzzle before. Sometimes I do so many lessons, I forget what I show and I don't show. The move, and this is what I wanted, I wanted the reason behind the thinking, was queen to d3 check. Hi, Aldo. Uh, good, to, good to see you logged on as well. It's always good to see familiar names and new names as well. So queen to d3 check. What the hell is this move? What the hell is this move? This is a crazy move. I mean, who? OK, but you may have said it first, but I wanted to hear the reason. It's OK having the move. But what, like I said the other day, one bit of advice, and we'll come back to this move in a minute. Let me just put my face on the screen for a second, because this is a very important bit of advice. When you're playing chess, it's the reasoning behind the moves, which is the most important thing in order to get better. Now, what I mean by that, when you're playing chess, nearly every move you play, you should be able to explain it to, let's say, your best friend um, or another chess buddy. It's like you should be able to give them a lesson the way you're playing a game. When I, What I do, I only really explain what's going on in my mind as a grandmaster. So... When you play a move like queen d3, what I mean is you should be able to say to your friend and explain, well, the reason I'm doing this is that if king takes d3, we'll come back to it in a minute, you sh and every move you should be able to explain when you're playing chess, when you get out the opening, really, even the opening. In the middle game, you should be saying, well, I'm doing this move to weaken my opponents like king because I want to attack there. I'm doing this move to get my king safe. You need to have a reason for everything. And this is so important, and you should be able to explain it. So when I when I used to teach, I always said to people, "Look, you need to if they show me a game, it's literally you need to explain to me verbally, not like a computer, not like 0.1.5 verbally why it's a good idea." And the idea of queen d3, black white has two choices: if king takes d3, now we can castle with check. And that is the important thing. So we've gained a very important move. Our king is now castled. So whatever white does, let's say white moves the king here. So king c2, he's got to get out of check. We now have time to play pawn takes rook, get a queen. And the big difference here is that white can't play queen takes f7, checkmate, because our king is castled. So Probably white should take on uh, this square, h8. But now we can go queen takes h8. And I, I would say around here is the end of what we need to calculate. And we just need to assess this position 
And I would say in this position, um, black is okay. I mean, black's exchanged down, but the white king is weak. The queen may be coming in to check on c3, and at least we've survived the worst. So this is, um, you know, it's an amazing move, queen d3. And what else can white play? Well, the other idea is if white takes with the bishop on d3, we've gained an important tempo because the bishop is no longer attacking f7. So now we can queen again. And when we do queen here, we get a similar thing to last time. Pawn takes h8, queen takes h8. And again, we are over the worst because we are going to castle. Actually, we're not even an exchange down. Did I say? Yeah, you're right, Michael. I, I'm, I'm actually imagining things there. Did I say that we're an exchange down? I can't count. I need to go back to school. <laughs> That's really bad. Um, we're not even. We're not even the exchange down. My, my bad. Um, you know, I'm a chess player who can't count. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? But uh, I think um, that shows you what that example shows you that in desperate positions, you need to think desperately. So if you, I mean, this is one thing very important, which I'm probably very good at. A lot of people say um, that. Uh, I'm one of the biggest swindlers, I, uh, that I'm a lucky chess player. Now, one thing I do, I'm very good at sensing how the position can change. So when I'm in control of the game, I actually try not to risk things too much. I try not to play complicated lines. Why complicate when you're better? Because the more complicated the position is, the more random, the more element of luck you're bringing into it. So if I'm doing well... I don't want to complicate. But if the position is going against me, or if I can feel that my opponent has some nasty plan coming up and I see it, then I need to complicate. I need to get a little bit more desperate and I need to find moves like we just saw there, queen to d3. Because if I do not find those moves, then um, I'm going to lose the game. So you need to smell. You need to have your senses. I call it the awakening. You need to be very awake and you need to change the tempo of a game of chess at the right time. Um, OK, well, I'm just looking at the questions here. Someone's saying, uh, can you make a course on the King's Indian defense? Well, maybe at some point. Got so many things going on. I mean, I'd love to make load more DVDs, opening DVDs. And I, I'm hoping I, I have time for that in the new year. And maybe, uh, you know, the Kings in your defense is a very good option. Um, and well, I like that. Uh, anyone can become a GM from Raz, who I'm sure is obviously a GM, um, you know, because, uh, you know, otherwise he wouldn't be saying that. I've never heard of GM Raz, but I'll have to go and check the feed a list there. Um, and yeah, OK, well, let's move on to another example, shall we? So I'm going to set up another example. And again, I hope you haven't seen this one, but let's set up another one. Now, this next one is so, so, so. Are we allowed to say this? I'm going to say it. it's a sexy move. It's a sexy move. It's one of my favorite puzzles um, that I've ever seen. It's taken from a real game and it actually was the last puzzle in a book that I wrote about, I don't know, eight years ago improve your attacking chess which is a puzzle book um now um the puzzle uh, you know the puzzle is an amazing puzzle and let's see how you get on now it's black to play in the next puzzle and win black to play and win i like that from michael anyone become a gm anyone can cook yeah yeah but literally any i can i can even cook well, I don't know if I'd even call it cooking. I, I can, you know, I, I can, I can attempt to cook sometimes, but I'm not, I'm not, I, you know, I'm not a great cook. Okay, but the next one, black to play and win. Let's see how you get on with this next puzzle. So, um, okay, let's bring the board up. Let's see how you get on. Anyone have any ideas? Anyone have any ideas here? Um, and da, 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 da. okay well fake faker is saying can you make an in-depth video on youtube about london versus king's indian well in actual fact i i do i do talk about that as you say in a video on youtube um but i i have done a dvd on that for chess base which goes into into more detail uh which i you know you know you can buy i think it's only like 20 euros now and it's a, you know it covers the whole of the london system so you can buy that if you if you want to learn a bit more um 
Simon, what advice on best opening for a complete novice? Well, um, an opening for a complete novice, the London system is very good for white. It depends what color you want. The London system for white um, is a good, good, uh, I would say, a good choice. Um, and by the way, it's black to play and win. So we're looking at this from the black side. So have a little go at this, guys, at home. Black to play and win. I really love this puzzle. It's one of my favorite ones. Um, so, I mean, in the course I'm selling below, um, I, um, you can click on the link below. Let me just mention that again. You can see the link in the description. It's the second link and it's half price, my 15 hour course at the moment. And it's only on half price for another day or so. So it's your last kind of possibilities to buy this course. And in there, I give an opening for white and for black against all you know white's main options now to be honest in the course this 15 hour course i'm not going to lie i don't concentrate on the openings a lot i only do a one hour on the white side what and two hours on black you know against the main moves the first main moves but i try to give you it's more for like i'd say lower rated players the you know the opening part of my thing because i'm concentrating more on the middle game but if you want a very quick repertoire very aggressive quick repertoire to learn in three hours then um this uh, the, the the actual uh course that you can click on 50 percent off below go and buy it now go on go on you know you want to you know you want to buy that course click on it boys and girls massive sale going on it will give you a, a new opening and the reason what i've done there i've picked openings that will give you very aggressive positions because i it is aimed at like i say the title of the course revolutionizing your chess um okay so um any suggestions here now we're talking about the awakening this is the start of the second part of my course and the awakening really is you've got to know when you think more when you suddenly turn on your should i say extra senses in a game of chess it's um by the way, Michael, you, uh, Michael, this is Vulo. You can get a hard copy if you click below. At Ginger GM, we're only offering it as digital download. But if you go to the iChess site, click below, they offer physical hard copies. Um, so you can get it to a D, you can get it on DVD. I think it costs a bit more. Uh, right. So here, if I was black here, I my spider senses would be going mental. I'd be like, oh my words, I must be winning why would i be thinking like that if i was black the reason i'd be thinking is i'm just first of all when you assess a chess position you look at the pawn structure number one and then number two you look at the pieces now first of all the pawn structure okay i don't think there's too much going on here the pawns are pretty symmetrical and there's nothing uh that's is really happening there's no pawn breaks pawn structure i would say um black is a little bit worse because the c6 pawn is a weakness and white doesn't have any particularly weak position um uh so the pawn structure not so important but the pieces i would be thinking hang on a minute look at all my pieces near to that white king how many pieces near to that white king it's actually i would say michael even five because you've got all the you've, you've even got the rook swinger the rook is ready to come over to this area of the board i mean five pieces five pieces over there um and i have to say so is it sarab has um had a very good uh effort at solving this and um we'll come to his solution in a minute he's come very close it's not the solution i was thinking of but may maybe it's also okay um so if i was black here i'd look at my attacking pieces and i think well look i've got so many pieces near my opponent's king i must be able to attack it then i'd have a look at my opponent's king and i'd be thinking well hang on a minute my opponent's king is not very well defended he's only got one piece this rook here defending it so i've got plus four attackers what i mean is i've got five attacking against one defending there must be a way through um and 
well done also to Saab Hoyt and Aldo. Well done, guys. You, 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 you've you got the solution I was thinking of. We'll, we'll put it on the board in a minute. But this is what you need to be thinking. This is the way I'd be thinking. I'd just be counting attackers, counting defenders. If you ever have plus three attackers, you're normally going to have very good chance to start a big attack. But there's no point attacking from a position of weakness. You have to build up your position of strength. Now, the move here, and I love this solution. I, I think it's an amazing solution. The best move, in my eyes, is queen takes e3. I just absolutely think this move is such a beautiful move to play. I have to admit, you know, when I first saw this, I dreamt of playing this move in one of my own games for a long, long time, just because it looks so nice. Now, the point of this move which looks crazy and it's hard to see but the point is is to weaken the g3 square this square here which i'm flashing red and let's just see what happens if white takes the queen but if white takes the queen now because g3 is weakened we can sacrifice more points knight to g3 check Wow, what a lovely second sacrifice. Now, this is a hard puzzle, but I think if you are trained up in tactics and you could sense that there was a solution, you have to look for the most forcing moves first. And knight to g3 check, well, this is forcing, and the whole point now is that white can't take with a pawn on f2. It's not there anymore. He has to take with this pawn, and now we sacrifice another piece rook to h6 and there's no way here that white can stop checkmate it's an amazing solution it actually happened in a game imagine if you played this in a game i would be living off this for a lifetime i'd literally i'd probably just give up chess if i did this checkmate i'd be like well there's no point in me playing anymore i can never get better than this how can i ever get better than this I mean, you know, I I'd, I'd literally think I cannot improve on, you know, this is the this is like a godlike move. I mean, you know, a, a god himself would be proud of this. I'm sure if God was a chess player, he'd be happy to, you know, he would he would be smiling here as well. And the point is if pawn takes knight, that is checkmate. You've given up both of your knights and your queen to give checkmate. And as as Trit has pointed out, it's a bit like an Anastasia checkmate, which is a certain checkmate when one king is trapped in on the rook's file. And what else can white do here? Well, if white tries to run away, get his king of space, let's try, as they say, he tries to move his rook. Well, here, what do we do? What is the checkmate here? Very simple. Let's see if anyone else can get this. Um, so it's black to play, checkmate in one move. This is something that I hope everyone can solve. What is the checkmate? Let's just see. I'll wait until someone finds it. This is a bit of an easier one if you're lower, a bit lower level. Black to play and checkmate. Come on, checkmate in one move. You need to stop that king coming to G1. Uh, yes, well done, Michael. Well done, Sarab. Hello, Tom Thomas. Hello, Stefan. Knight to F3. And this is this is a little bit like what I call the Arabian checkmates. The Arabian checkmates, one of the oldest checkmates, is when uh, the knight and rook coordinate to do checkmate. So this is an amazing idea. This queen takes e3. I mean, it's for some reason I just love um, the pattern of that. Um, now rook takes e3 is has was suggested as well, and rook takes rook takes e3 is a nice idea. But it's not as forcing because here white has the surprising move, I believe. Did I say knight takes d5? Let me just check if I got this right. Knight takes d5 I've got. I'm just wondering why, why this is a good move now. Uh, why is that a good move? Knight takes d5. How does that help? Because the idea of rook takes e3 is the same. Pawn takes e3. And now knight to g3 check. And we have the same check mate here. Pawn takes here. And our queen anywhere with checkmate coming up. So, so I, I would say rook takes e3 is a close second, close second um, to to, uh, uh, to 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 solving this one. Uh, uh, g6 is okay. Where whereabouts whereabouts are we going to? G g6. Sorry, 
and so i think i think quick rook takes e3 looks good to me as well i mean it's more fun to play with the queen because your rook has options but um uh duh, duh, duh. so did you mean bishop g6 maybe so but anyway one one critical line let's just have a look at queen takes e3 a little bit more now the game i'm actually just going to get my books i don't have it on me <laughs> which is surprising um okay the the solution um the actual game let's just play through the game because it is well worth seeing i'm actually just going to get my book out now in actual fact white now came up uh with an amazing idea um bishop to g6 this was a, a brilliant defensive idea and the idea of this is a counter sacrifice just try to stop the rook coming to g6 it's an amazing an amazing defensive idea and the point is here that um uh well i mean to answer very quickly another suggestion someone said queen a4 uh i think if you play that move i can even take it i can even go rook takes a4 because if you go rook b8 check i have this move to defend my back rank but another thing if you go queen here if i was black i may just move my rook to e8 because i don't see how your queen helps you over here but bishop to g6 is an amazing idea um and to answer more your questions michael's saying if download what kind of file it is i want to see if i make my own dvd and play it on my tv well michael like i said you can buy it on dvd if you go to the second link below to buy my 15 hour course you can get it straight on dvd but it's mp4 files that you get it in if anyone clicks and wants to buy my course below to um you know to try and prove their chest my 15 hour course is half price for now and of course that helped me out uh you know doing more free stuff and i'll be able to do more webinars for everyone who buys that course so you can go and buy that now only for a short period at 50 percent off i think it's mp4 files uh basically mp3 uh hello job so okay what about bishop g6 what would you play now now the idea with bishop g6 is if rook takes g6 i think now white would have played queen takes g6 what a crazy counter sacrifice and you're getting rid of the queen but the rook can no longer come over here so something like pawn takes queen pawn takes queen and actually white is now winning because white is white is actually now an exchange up so an amazing defensive idea and after bishop g6 what do you think what would you now play if you were black uh hello uh Charifa. i hope i've said that right how much is the course i believe the course at 50 percent off is it's i'm not gonna lie it's quite expensive it's you know 70 odd dollars it's at half price it's normally double that price so you're getting it half price but it is 15 hours and it took me you know 100 hours to prepare and everything so you know it, 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 I, I i think it's worth well i'm obviously gonna say i think it's worth the money i'm not gonna say i think it's a load of rubbish am i <laughs> um, no but i think it's worth it and maybe anyone who's bought the course can tell you as well what they think uh obviously honest feedback is always good okay so what would you play off this any suggestions here any suggestions what do we play any suggestions here what is the best way to play here what it, what is the best way to play there's one way which i would play if i was black here which actually happened in the game and let me just say that you still you don't want to get involved with taking this one you'd lose your queen another idea of this is if i go pawn takes g6 well now my rook can no longer get to h6 so white is winning because he just goes pawn takes queen and a variation we first looked at knight to g3 check pawn takes g3 is not working because we have an obstacle the pawn on g6 oh no is in the way so we have to come up with a good solution here anyone got an idea and i know this is a very tough puzzle it's basically the last puzzle in my book because i consider it one of the toughest puzzles um but i really like it i think it's a nice little puzzle so what would you play come on any suggestions is anyone awake are you awake hello also while you're trying to solve this uh, i would like to um tell you uh, all that i'm streaming tonight as well uh let me just put the address of where i'm streaming i'm doing a two-hour stream if i don't have a chance to um if i don't have a chance to play any blitz today i'll play some blitz later 
um, and I'm streaming later on at that address there. So that is basically going to be in three hours, um, three, just over three hours from now. I'm doing a two hour stream at that web address there. So you can join me for free um, for two more hours of, of chess at that address. Um, so uh, it is, yes, Knutz, it is on discount, the second course there. Uh, it is uh, just for the second course, you can get half price off. To, if, you, if you click on the link below, that will help you and to buy my last course. This is the last webinar I'm doing. So this is probably after today. I think the price goes up to double. So this is your last chance to buy that course at half price. Um, any suggestions? Well, we have some suggestions, but no one's got the right answer yet. No one's got the right answer. Knight to F3. I don't think really helps, does it? Knight to F3. Uh, if you play knight to f3, can't I just take your queen? Can't I just take your queen? Um, da, 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 da. This one. Um, I don't think that helps. Well, I think Aldo has come to it, and so has Sarab and August. Yeah, they, they've come to it. But I've got an, queen takes f2. Um, oh, not my last webinar of my life. Did I just say that? Well, I'm streaming at a different channel later on. But on this channel, it's the last webinar I'm going to be doing for a while, I'd say. Um, okay, so yeah, you, most of you got the right answer. It's queen takes f2. This is the right idea because remember, we're trying to get rid of the pawn there. So when our knight comes in, it's stronger. But what is your idea after white plays bishop takes f7 check? Because white is now trying to get rid of your swinging rook. So what is that idea? Uh, well, it's already discounted, Richard. So at the moment, it's seventy dollars. So that is the discount. It's normally one hundred and forty dollars. All the prices are on the on the thing below, so you can go and check it out there. It is fifteen hours. It is a really intense course, hence why it costs so much. But you know, over to you. Your choice if you want to buy it or not. Obviously. Um, and okay, so what do we play here? What is what is the way that Black wins here? And this is how the game finished. Black to play and win. And core black must have been so happy after this win. Black to play and win. What is the idea? And as Aldo said, the threat was rook to e1. So that's why white probably has to do something like bishop takes f7 check. Otherwise, nothing's happening. Um, my favorite chess player, anonymous gamer, say Macau Tao. Macau Tao uh, was my favorite chess player. Well, we can't take with a king on f7, but we can take with a queen. And this is the same idea. Well done to everyone who solved this. And the idea now is we want to go here, knight g3 and rook h6. So the game finished, rook takes f7, and it's the same tactic as before. Knight to g3 check. Uh, white has to take that, and we see the same idea. Rook to h6. Rook to h6 coming in. And this idea is going to be checkmate because, well, there's nothing that white can do to stop that checkmate. So it's a beautiful, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful checkmate. It actually, as Anonymous Gamer is saying, it's kind of, this is kind of in the style of uh, Macau Tao. So that's, I think, uh, one of my, one of my, um, one of my top like puzzle positions. I mean, I, I really love that last one. And there's something about it which I, um, you know, really enjoy. But how would you solve that kind of thing in a game? Now, again, something my course talks about, and I'll just bring it up uh, here. One thing that my course talks about, and oh dear, how do I how do I get uh, the, the video back now? Did I just? I oh, know. Okay. One thing my course talks about is, um, well, in the second part, though, the last five hours of the course is all about tactics. And you can see that chapter, The Awakening. It talks about it there. It talks about, well, you've got to train your senses to when you should be noticing these sort of crazy ideas. And there's certain ways you can do that in your own game. So you can, you know, you've got to be aware of the position. You've got to be aware of possibilities that are going on. And you've got to be, uh, you know, awake to these possibilities. You can see that part two, how to find better moves. And that's really all, all about calculating there, I'd say. that That's the most important thing uh, about that part of the uh, of, of the, the, the lesson. Now, I did say I was going to play some Blitz Chess. Um, 
I don't think there's really much time. There's only 15 minutes left. The time goes quickly. Uh, if you want to watch some Blitz Chess, check out my YouTube channel. It's just Ginger GM videos. Ginger is my beard. GM. Uh, apparently, I'm a GM. And videos. If you go there, then you will see uh, some Blitz Chess. But let's let's stick with the puzzles for now. I think I've got a couple more that I want to share with you. Let's just test you up, try and improve your puzzles. Now, another thing I do, uh, this next one is related to, to the course. Um, and one thing, what I'm trying to explain to you in the course, you know, the one below, the second link below in description, which you can click and buy, is I want to teach you how to attack in positions where you have the isolated pawn. Now, the reason I've done this is when you have an isolated pawn, you often get really fun attacking positions. And the course revolutionize your chess is aimed uh, particularly at, at that kind of thing. You know, it's aimed at giving you um, these uh, attacking positions. So that's why I picked isolated pawn positions. And at the end of this, uh, after this next puzzle, I'm going to show you my, the openings I recommend for white very quickly because you can get isolated pawn positions. It's weird. In a lot of cases, not out of every opening, but out of a lot of openings. Um, now, I see also, okay, let's bring up. It's white to play. Uh, white to play in, in the next one. And let's see how you get on. White to, well, let, actually, hang on. Before I put that up, I just want to just change the setting here. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So uh, white to play, and in this position, um, white to play and get a, a, a very good attack. And this is a, a typical, uh, a typical example of attacking an isolated pawn position. Now, um, well, uh, I don't know if that's true here, here. I've been trying to answer most of the chats, but obviously, a man can only do one thing at a time or a couple of things at a time. Uh, if you try talking, playing moves on the board, setting up positions, answering chat, uh, it's quite a lot of things to do, you know. Uh, so I do my best at answering uh, things in the chat. But obviously, I'm only going to answer questions uh, if I can. Um, and, well, I like to – yeah, I mean, the, the difference between method one and two, Richard, to answer your question, they both are sort of – there to help each other while i talk by the way you guys can have a go at finding the correct plan for white here not just the first move not just the first move um not just the first move try to find the right plan so remember what i said you need to explain more than one move in chess it might be easy to see the first move but what is what is the continuation of that idea i'm not you know if you just tell me one move here right you might have the right idea but what's the next move and you've got to think of your opponent's defensive ideas a lot of people just telling me one move look a little bit further so the difference between method one and two richard is number two well number one is a, my first method is really an overview of your whole game so i talk about um basically most areas of the game which i think are important so i talk about positional chess exchanges end games and patterns how patterns are really important in my second method course the one which i'm selling here for 50 percent off the second course is really about um i would say it's giving you more details so it gives you an actual opening and it's really aimed at specifics so i'm aiming at giving you specific positions i'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you if that makes uh, any any sense um okay well no one here has told me the right idea all the way through i'll give you a little clue a little clue here now because black has played h6 the idea of taking on h6 i think is a pretty obvious attacking idea when you're one thing this course tells you really a lot about is how to attack in these positions and once you watch my course you will know that the first thing you try to do in isolated pawn positions is to attack h7 um and that's the first thing aldo you're on form today you're on form today aldo and i like the way you've actually given an explanation there well done mate well done mate that, that's entirely correct um so 
what I talk about first in, in this course below is when you're playing these positions, the first thing is to attack h7 with your queen and bishop. Step one. Because when you do that, you force your opponent to play a move like h6 or g6. As soon as they make a move like h6 or g6, as soon as they move a pawn around their king, they have made a weakness. Like you see here, this pawn on h6 is a weakness. The next thing you need to do is take advantage of that weakness and one of the main ideas is obviously to sacrifice on that square. So bishop takes h6 is the first move you should be thinking of because that bishop on c1 was not doing anything. You want to open up your opponent's king. But if you do this and follow it up with queen takes h6, there's an issue here. In chess, you always have to think of your opponent's best defensive moves. You cannot be a good attacker without considering what your opponent is doing. A typical mistake lower rated players do. They do not look at their opponent's moves. And here, if it is white to move, great. You have knight g5 coming up next, and that should be that should be winning. Uh, let's say black plays a stupid move like rook d8. Well, now you can bring a third piece into the attack, and you have three pieces attacking. And yes, this should be checkmate straight away uh well coming up because if we just do our count which we did before we have one two three pieces attacking our opponent only has the knight defending we therefore have plus two attackers and plus two attackers if it includes the queen against an open king is often going to lead to checkmate but what is black's best defensive move here gem well done job well done well done stefan to answer Hare's question, is it 50% off for Christmas? No, it's only the course is only 50% off. I think for another, it will tell you there, probably only for another couple of hours, because as soon as this webinar is over, it's going to probably go up to full price. So it is your last chance to click on that link in the description and buy the course for half price. You don't have much time left. But here, Black has the move, Queen to H5. And that move defends everything. That move defends everything in the position. Remember, it's black to move. Because when you're defending against an attack, it's often a good idea to try to exchange queens. And here, you're going to try to exchange queens. And remember, black is a piece up, so this defends everything. And there's not really any way to continue attack. You can throw a check in, but now just king to h8. Worth pointing out, I don't want to take the bishop because that knight there is defending the queen. But I just moved my king. I just moved my king. And you're going to run out of ideas here. You're going to have to exchange queens. And then in a, in a, you know, a high-level game, that will simply be losing because you're pieced down, which you sacrifice. But as Aldo pointed out, as well as others, a very beautiful idea. And this is a second typical idea for the isolated pawn position. The second typical idea is d5 an amazing idea and d5 when you have the isolated pawn position is it's a very typical idea and here you use this idea i would say it's a distraction technique you're trying to block your opponent's pieces from coming over it so it's like you know in a battle you sacrifice one of your troops to distract or to block your opponent's best defense and um this d5 move is the winning idea and this this is a very subtle move but it works incredibly well for example um let's say knight takes d5 was played and now we can take on h6 and here there's no longer this defensive move and we're threatening queen to h7 and queen to h8 checkmate interference is another way you could explain it yeah that's right let's say well, this is how the game continued. Knight to f6. What move do we do here? Well, we want to bring in another attacker to the position. So knight to g5. And now after knight to e5, black is desperately trying to bring his pieces around to defend. Um, white can force checkmate here in... Let me just work this out. One, two, three, four. White to force checkmate in five moves. And this is, um, so we'll have a look at f5 a bit later on, but let's look at this. White to force checkmate in five moves. So anyone tell me all the five moves. Well, of course, Omkar is saying queen takes g5, and where is the mate? 
well, okay, but you're, you, you can do this, but you're a queen down. You're a queen for two pieces down. Your king is still weak, and eventually you'll lose this. I might just swing my rook around. There might not be checkmate, but okay, it's, it's, you're a queen down. So it's a very easy win, this, with an extra queen. So I wouldn't be worried about that. You can eliminate that. We're talking about elimination. You can eliminate this idea from your thoughts because white's easily winning. You don't need to consider that. It's easily winning. But the question is, after knight e5, where is the checkmate? And you've got to tell me all of the five moves. Mark is just telling me the first moves. You've got to think correctly when you're playing chess. And what I mean by that, in a game, you have to find all the five moves because you wouldn't just work it out move by move because if you did that, you're not calculating properly. You're not using the process of elimination. If the first move is wrong, you've really cut down your possibility. So when you're solving these puzzles, again, uh, Vishal, you're just telling me the first move. But how does that help? You've got to tell me all the moves to checkmate here. Um, all the moves for checkmate. I'm not sure what Hare is saying there. I open the position of my trousers. I, I don't think I even want to go there, Hare. I don't want to go there. Well, Jem, that is one checkmate. So Jem is pointing out if Bishop H7, Knight takes H7, we have a checkmate. Well done. You found one, Jem. But if Bishop H7, let's say I don't take the bishop. Let's say Bishop H7 check, King to H8. How do you checkmate there? I'll make it a bit easier. I'll make it a bit easier. So uh, both people have pointed out if Knight takes, there's Queen here and queen h8 checkmate that's correct but what about if you play king to h8 now this is a typical checkmate pattern with these three pieces in this position and what i talk about my first master method course is patterns how important patterns are and this is an example of that so it's white to play in force checkmate i believe in four moves and four moves in four moves what is the checkmate here still no one has told me all of the moves. I'll give you a little bit more time now. All of the moves. And after this, I'm going to show you what I, how I get you into, in my course, into the isolated pawn position. Uh, well done, Tash Ha. And well done to Spare Rib. Well done. I think Spare Rib has got it. Um, well, not quite Spare Rib. Um, Tash Cart has got it because every move that Tash uh, Tash Ha is suggesting is a check, is a check, every move. And the answer is, so when, you, when you're in these positions, you've got to look for the most forcing ideas. You've sacrificed, your opponent's king is weak, so look for checks. And this is a very important pattern to remember. Get rid of the pawn on f7 with checks. Queen and knight, a very important attacking unit. So bishop to g6 check black only has one move king to g8 and now that sounds biatmar that sounds like a, a a very icelandic name am i right bishop takes f7 check and this is the key idea because you get rid of the pawn that's defending g6 and here knight takes f7 is the only move and after knight takes f7, the g6 square is free. I know this is a hard puzzle, but it's one of those ones when you've seen it once, hopefully you'll remember the same pattern for future. Can everyone see it now? Queen to g6, check. And now the king only has two squares it can go to, and it's checkmate in both positions. King to f8. And it's what I call the kiss of death checkmate. Queen takes f7, mate. Or if king to h8, we can now go this nice little move. Knight takes f7, checkmate. So I think that's a nice little... I like that. It's a nice a nice little tactic there. So um, I see that uh, Sony is asking, what's my rating? Well, my ELO rating... Uh, obviously, I'm a grandmaster, and the highest I've been is 2550. A uh, bit of a slump at the moment. It's probably all the you know all the lack of actual playing I'm doing. I've had a couple of good results, but it's about 2450 around that currently uh, at the moment. I'm hoping to get over 2500 again soon. 
um but yeah i mean uh, it's it's still decent but you know at least i've got the grandmaster title uh, okay to answer uh, aldo's one let's have a look if pawn takes d5 um and we'll go back there again so let's have a look so this was how to attack in isolated pawn positions and a lot of the time this h6 move you always should look out for bishop h6 and after d5 well aldo is asking what about pawn takes d5 well actually aldo you're correct this is a better defensive move and in this position well we still do the same plan aldo i think queen takes h6 and um the reason we do this um hello rage against the machine I, I do like a bit of rage against the machine music so hello and the idea here this is still better than when we first did it because the pawn on d5 is cutting out the queen so black can no longer play queen to h5 here so this is still a very big attack here a very big attack um white is threatening to bring the knight to g5 with the same idea how can black defend here? it's not easy to see a defense black's best defense is d4 when the queen is aiming to come over but now something like knight to b5 is yeah this uh aldo knight to b5 i think here is 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 the key idea or maybe also i'm just thinking is knight to g5 still an idea if i was white i'd be thinking about knight to g5 here um you can ask me a question i'll try to answer as many questions as i can um and also there was the f5 move i'll come back there i think both of these moves aldo maybe even knight, i've got in my notes knight to b5 and the idea is um again i'm just blocking your queen out the attack is ongoing uh bishop to f5 cool you're making life difficult for me aldo <laughs> maybe now i have queen to g5 check do i have that move uh maybe i can play this aldo maybe this move is winning let's have a look if you don't go bishop to g6 i will uh win your bishop so bishop to g6 and then maybe i can play bishop takes g6 a bit like before pawn takes queen takes and go knight g5 next uh i i think um spare rib i try to answer my emails but i, I often i sometimes get like 50 emails a day it's not always easy to do that so um it's simon at gingergm.com that's my website gingergm.com so you can try to get in touch with me there i will try to answer yeah you you're, you're you're getting the most out of me today aldo that is correct so there you go it's a very dangerous attack now one thing i wanted to finish the course with and we saw there an attack from an isolated pawn position and if we go back to the contents of my course what I, it took me ages to work out um, how to, to base this, this course. But, you know, it is in the link. This is the last chance now. I'm going to finish this in about five minutes, this webinar. It's your last chance to click that second link below this video and buy the course. It's your last chance at a discount, 50% off for a long time. And one thing I talk about there is, first of all, how to get an isolated pawn position and this is something i want you to do when you're white you can't get it in all positions but you can get it in a lot so i talk to you how you get it and then i talk what you should do when you get it and this took me loads of thinking to do and um oh yeah i did someone said f5 didn't they i can't answer all the questions guys okay let's before i move on to that let's go back to f5 Cool. Okay. Right. Let's do it. I did say I'll answer. It. If I said I'm going to answer it, I will. So okay. I apologise. I, you know, uh, Kumar. I, I, I don't want to make anyone unhappy. I do my best, but you know, sometimes your best is just not good enough in life. <laughs> okay. So we had this amazing D5. I did say I'll answer it, so I will. So we had someone suggesting F5 here. Let me have a look. What would I play here? Well, first of all, I know I have a draw with. Um, uh queen to g6 so i have at least a draw that's quite nice but how do i win here do i have bishop takes f5 i'm thinking that is the move which i really want to play when i'm gonna get a good attack i also have knight takes d5 maybe this is the best uh maybe this is the best defensive try like i said i can get a draw just by checking you but i'm obviously going for a win so let's just have a think about this i haven't actually looked at this one uh for a while well ever bishop takes pawn takes so okay i'm going to tell you the way i'm thinking here um 
Bishop takes f5, pawn takes f5, and then rook takes d5. Should give me a very big attack. So that's that's one idea. Queen c7, and can I finish you off somehow there? Should be able to, but I can't see it. Maybe knight to b5. That 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 looks very good. Do I have anything better? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, well, let's have a look. Um, bishop takes f5 does look juicy. Let's have a look at this. And the idea of this now is that I'm bringing another piece into the attack. Uh, for example, if you I, if you play knight takes c3, I think I'm mating you here with bishop h7 check, king f7, queen g6 check, king f8, queen g8 check, mate. Or in that line, king to h8, and now we have a very typical pattern, bishop g6, king g8, queen h7, queen f7 checkmate. So I think after bishop f5, you have to take on f5. Now I have two pawns for the piece, but I'm going to continue with rook takes d5, threatening your queen, threatening the bishop. You have to now um, bring your queen back to defend your bishop. So something like queen c7. And here, I probably just keep increasing the pressure with a move like knight b5. And remember, I always have a perpetual check, but my pieces are looking very dangerous here. And this must be a winning attack for white. But you are correct. This is probably the best defensive idea that uh, black has. OK, now to finish this off, to finish this off, I'm now going to very quickly in five minutes show you how you can get the isolated pawn position as white with e4. And I'm going to show you some of the openings I recommend. If you want to see the rest, then you have to buy the course. Uh, but I'm going to show you some of my suggestions um, of how to uh, basically get an isolated pawn position from the opening. So let's uh, go back to the right to the start. OK, I'm going to have to open up another board. And I know you can't see the chessboard at the moment, but let me just do that. And uh, da, 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 if I can do that. OK. And OK, so let's go back. This is the last thing. And you might be thinking, well, look, you know, the isolate, it's all OK to get the isolated pawn position. But how do you get it? Well, let me just show you. And this took me ages to get it. OK, I'm looking at the questions as well. Uh, how do you think at middle game to gain advantage? Well, that's what I go into in the course, Sony. I look at how you get these positions in the course and i talk about the middle game a lot and the course is 15 hours long the one that you can buy below so it's a long course 15 hours long to get it now let's have a look so okay against the okay so against the sicilian okay i recommend you go c3 and the idea i want to get an isolated pawn so for example black has two main moves knight f6 or d5 d5 is the most popular here i recommend you take and go d4 with the idea at some point black is going to take on d4 and look what we've got boys and girls we have the isolated pawn position and this isolated pawn position well this position is what we want to get because that's what we've just been looking at and that's why i want to get you into the middle game with the same pawn structure so you know the same ideas now what about um the karakhan well against the karakhan i recommend we go b4 we take on d5 and i'm doing this very quickly so i might lose a lot of you here we go c4 because in this position after some normal moves like this and black takes on c4 what do we get again surprise surprise we get the isolated pawn position again so we've got it against the karakhan okay so you may be thinking, well, what about the French defence? You can't get it against the French, can you? We'll have a look at this. Against the French defence, I'm saying you go knight d2. And what I'm recommending in my course are very simple ideas. So you don't have to, you don't have to take a lot of time learning them. They're simple, they're easy. They don't, you know, they're quick, they're nice. Um, the panoff is not refuted by Bishop G4. What a, that's an absolute load of rubbish. Top grandmasters still play the panoff. Uh, 20, I see 2700s playing the panoff. But what I'm doing in my course, I'm um, basically not going into a lot of detail. I'm just trying to give you a very quick overview and trying to get you to middle game positions where you get this. So here, I am recommending this. Now, there's two main moves, C5 or Knight to F6 against C5. 
I'm recommending C3. Why am I recommending this? Because the main line here is pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and look what we've got again. We've got the isolated pawn position. Woohoo! And what about knight to f6? Well, against knight to f6, um, instead of c5, I'm recommending we go bishop d3, when after c5, c3, at some point, black is going to have to take. And what have we got again? Yes, you're right, the isolated pawn position. And another thing I do, you may think it's impossible after e4, e5 to get the isolated pawn, and it's a lot harder. But one line I recommend is this idea of bishop 2 here. And I recommend some lines here where you can get the isolated pawn. But really, you know, if you want to learn about it in a lot more detail, obviously I do I do talk about it one hour. Now I'm gonna be honest, the openings I look at in the DVD, you know, I'm not gonna to lie to you, I do very quickly. Uh, because I've done a lot of opening DVDs and the course was not aimed at really, you know, learning the opening in depth. I'm trying to help you learn it quickly. I'm, and, you know, I'm trying to help you learn it quickly so you can get into the middle game. And I'm really concentrating on the middle game. So it's not aimed at uh, learning openings in a lot of depth. It's more learn, learning middle game positions. So that's the thing. Uh, and it's trying to, you know, that, that's why I've done it. I mean, I've, I've done it for a reason. Uh, right. Well, look, we, we've come to the end of this webinar. It's your last chance now. I think only for an hour or so. I don't know how long they're doing the sale, but it's not long your last chance if you go to the description below and you'd like the way i teach you like the ideas i'm coming out with this 15 hour course the last chance to get it at half price and you know it's uh, it's your last chance i'm being asked pan laws do i consider myself an in-game expert last chance to get your questions in people um i don't consider myself an expert i think all gms are good at every area of the game I think you can't be weak at one area if you're a grandmaster because you won't be a grandmaster. So um, I, I I consider myself good at the end game. I think I'm a pretty decent player, but certainly not an expert uh, as such. But every area of the game is important when you get to the high levels. But I think tactics are most important, hence why I concentrate on that as well uh, in the course. But okay, like I said, it's your last chance to buy that go and click on the second link even if you don't buy it go and check it out and do remember that um it's 50 percent off that course only for a short period and you can get a you do get a money back guarantee so if you buy the course below you don't like it you can just get your money back anyway so don't worry about that you get your money back anyway and uh, i'm sure you won't be asking for your money back will you i hope not anyway um and i'm going to be streaming in three hours um at the following address here which i'll put in the chat so if you want more of me if you if you, if you haven't had enough i've got i'm doing a two hour stream at this address here and you can catch me there uh for more of my stream um there we go so uh yeah a bit more dinner aldo uh, uh, and then a bit more streaming so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna do do a bit of that have a little bit of a break little bit of a chill out and i'll be back again at that address so i'll see you all later last chance to buy that now that's last chance obviously i've got to sell some things as well to keep myself doing these webinars for, you know i don't get paid to do these webinars so i've got to, i've got to sell the odd dvd so come on go and buy it boys and girls thank you very much for listening and uh, i'll be back three hours on my own site so goodbye for now i'll catch you later bye